talk us through this. The steel tariffs, they seem to work for Trump. Are they going to work for Biden? Well, I think the key is that it's a political decision. It's not an economic decision. And as your earlier guests have noted, the total amount of Chinese steel into the United States market at the moment is less than 1%, uh, barely half a percent, in fact. And so it's not about uh, overcapacity of steel being dumped into the United States at this time. It's really about trying to maintain support for Joe Biden in a close election with key constituencies in steelmaking states. So this this particular issue is much more Indeed. about politics than it is about economics. Indeed. So, look, using this as a lever of leverage. But, Deborah, how are the Democrats suddenly OK with this? Weren't they opposed to those Trump era steel tariffs when he was in power? Yeah, the ironies are, are everywhere. So one is that the Democrats did complain about Donald Trump doing exactly the same thing, using Section 301 as an unfair trade practice, declaring it was a national security concern. Those were raised as, as worries by Democrats. And isn't this just straight up protectionism and vote buying? And here the Democrats are now doing it. So I think that's ironic. There's a second irony, too. And you were just noting the European discussions on overcapacity. The United States has been complaining bitterly about the United... Uh, about European efforts to discuss overcapacity and ac accusing the Europeans of engaging in protectionism. And now the United States has said overcapacity in steel is an issue for the United States, therefore we must protect our market, but it's not actually protectionism. In our case, it's justified. And so, you know, again, full of irony here in a set of policies around steel. Deb, it's Lynn joining the conversation. I'm just wondering, given these developments, what do you think will be the likely Chinese response? Do you think that there could be retaliatory actions taken? My guess is probably not on steel, simply because, again, the, the numbers just don't justify a significant response from China other than a sort of vocal, angry, what are you doing? Um, the one that is becoming more of an issue potentially is the launch of a Section 301 investigation on shipbuilding. Now, that could be much more significant because it, it sets up the stakes for uh, further retaliation by the United States against China and then potentially by China against the United States. And so as we head into a very tight election season, both parties are competing in the United States to see who could be toughest on China. And I think the question is, well, how far will they go? And at least in my view, I'm not sure there's a policy that's too far for the United States. I'm not sure the, there's a there is any kind of policy suggestion that would lead some folks in Washington to sit up and say, whoa, that's a bridge too far. We should be careful about that. And so, you know, this gets risky, uh, these kinds of actions, and you don't really know where they're going to end up. And so we will be watching this very carefully, as will, of course, the Chinese. And I would just say, finally, again, sitting here in Singapore, there are implications of these actions between the United States and China for the rest of the world as well. And so it's not just a domestic issue in the United States or a competitiveness concern for China. It's a global challenge to all of us to try to figure out how we're going to navigate what appears to be increasingly bumpy waters once more.